ever feel like comparing multiple strategies across different markets is just useless? For example, trading crude oil versus trading the NASDAQ. How do you compare these strategies and how do you know which one is the best? If you are trading multiple markets or multiple time frames, then this video is for you. Of course, we can always compare strategies using net profit or return to drawdown or profit factor and so on and so forth. But these things, they don't compare apples to apples. And actually, there is a better way for strategy comparison. This metric is called perfect profit. The metric was introduced by Robert Pardo in this book. He glanced over the subject, but because I'm always striving to get better at algo trading, I decided to tackle this metric and build it for my own strategies. And I will share it with you. The concept actually extremely simple. You basically measure the perfect profit for any market meaning you are buying every low and selling every high, selling every high, buying every low, to the perfect point. Of course, this is a theoretical number because you will never achieve that number. That number is always built in hindsight because in hindsight, we know what is the lowest low and what is the highest high. Once we accumulate that total number, then we can easily measure the strategy returns to that perfect number. And that will tell us how much the strategy is extracting from that market. And then we can rank all strategies based on that metric. And that will tell us which strategy is performing the best on that market and that time frame. This is an example on the S&P 500 market using the futures daily session. The indicator that I built is called the perfect profit. And this is the indicator in yellow. So as you can see, it's going from lowest point to the highest point to the lowest point. Now, how do we measure like why we didn't take this pivot, for example, or this one or this one? The indicator using the price and the retracement percent. So in this case, we are using the close to determine the price and five denotes to 5% distance between the pivot in order to take it. So right now, this swing is equal or more than 5%. You can see this is about 5,900 and this is about 5,400. So the difference is more than 5%. And that's why this swing was not registered because it's less than 5%. Now we can change the price instead of the close, we can use, for example, the low. And you will notice now we will not be sticking to the close prices. Instead, we will go to the low prices. So this is now going to the low. In fact, you can do any calculation. For example, I can use typical price. I can also change the retracement. So let's go back to close. And now let's go to 10%. And you can see now the retracement are different. And so is the indicator. So in building this indicator, you will face the issue of what is the perfect percent for each market. Of course, we can do a trial and error and find which percent that really follows the market swings in order to determine the perfect profit. Because remember, the more swings you have, the more profits you are going to make theoretically. So a better way to tackle this by including volatility into the equation. And instead of trial and error on every market and every time frame, we can use the average true range multiple, and that will hug the swings much better than any trial and error we do. So again, this is the same indicator using the 5%. And now I will switch on the volatility and look how better the swings will hug the curves. And you, as you can see now, we are making much better representations of the swing up and down. That is not the only advantage we get when we include the ATR. The other advantage we get is we don't need to worry about which market or which time frame we are measuring because the volatility will always adapt to that market and that time frame. So then we always can get the best number of pivots and the best perfect profit for every market, every time frame. So let's look at some numbers that we get by using this indicator. For example, 
using the ES.D, this is the daily sessions of the E-mini S&P 500 futures. Based on the past 18 and a half years, we get 275 pivots, accumulating 23,000 points. That's about 805%. In total is about $1.1 million. So if we trade the S&P 500 E-mini futures perfectly, buying every swing low, selling every swing high, we will make about $1.1 million for the past 18 and a half years using the daily time frame and the daily session. On average, this will give us 85 points per swing. It's 2.9% per swing, and it's about $4,000 per swing. Now, the 24 hour session. So it's the daily time frame, but it is the 24 hour session. And the numbers are very close 241 pivots, about $1 million. 3% on average, and again, $4,000 on average. Now, if I switch to the 60-minute time frame, we can see there's a huge difference. Now, we are making about 5,000 pivots and accumulating $8 million. On average, the swings are 1.5%, about $1,600. And the same goes for 240 minutes. This is the AMD, this is the mid-cap, and this is the crude oil daily time frame. Again, the beauty of the ATR is it adapts to the time frame. So you can see the best time frames for daily on the ES, regardless of the session, it's about 3%. On the mid cap is about 3.5%. On the crude oil is about 2%. But they all hover between $4,000 and $6,000. It's only when we get to intraday we have a huge difference. So now this is the yardstick to measure our strategy too. So the perfect profit for the past 18 and a half years is $1 million on the S&P 500, and it's about $1.3 million on the crude oil. And now we can take our strategy, get the net profit during that period, divide it by this number, and we get the metric. So here is an example of strategies that are trading the S&P 500 daily session. It's the daily time frame, daily session, and these are multiple strategies, and this is the net profit. So by dividing this net profit by the total perfect profit, we get a percentage. These are the percentages. And as per Robert Pardo recommendation, Anything above 5%, that means the strategy is good. Remember, this perfect profit is something we cannot achieve. It's theoretical. So now I can sort by this number. And for example, this strategy, which is making 321,000, it is the best strategy based on this metric. Now, probably you notice by dividing the net profit over the perfect profit number, we will get the percent which is correlated exactly one-to-one -one with the net profit. I mean, we don't need to go all this way to find out which strategy is the best. We can already sort by net profit and we know which strategy is the highest. So most likely Pardo is using some other metric combined with this to find the best strategy. So since he doesn't go over that in his book, I decided to do it on my own. And I already devised a metric that takes the exposure into the equation, which makes a lot of sense to me. So imagine a strategy that trades, let's say, 200 trades over the past decade versus a strategy that trades 500 trades. And both are producing the same net profit. Where obviously in that case, the strategy with the less exposure is better than the one with the more exposure. And this is what I have here, the return divided by exposure. So we divide the net profit by the exposure percent. So by dividing these, now we have an equal comparison between strategies. This is not per net profit anymore. So if I sort now by this metric, you can see the number one is $145,000 net profit. And as you can see, number two is $321,000. It's more than double, but it's number two. 
And that is because the exposure. So you see the 321,000 showing 41% exposure to the market, while the 145,000 showing 17% exposure to the market. Now, all these strategies are using exactly the same data history because that also needs to be taken into consideration. Now, by combining these two metrics together, we can have a combo edge rating. So now if I sort by this number, we can see this strategy is still on top. And now the $321,000 strategy went to number three. Now this one is better because now we are taking both measurements, which is how much the strategy is extracting from the total perfect profit and the exposure. And I'm calling this the combo edge rate. Now why go through all this trouble to find this combo edge rate? I mean, obviously I can sort by net profit, by return to drawdown, even if you sort by a special metric, which is the return divided by the exposure we can still find out the best strategy. But by taking the perfect profit into consideration, now we have a metric that can compare strategies over different markets and different timeframes, which you cannot do by taking any single metric alone. So here I have other strategies. This is the ES 24 hours daily timeframe. This is the ES 60 minutes timeframe. This is the mid cap daily time frame and crude oil daily time frame. So if I combine all these strategies together in a database, and then I sort by the best combo edge rate, you can see now this strategy on the ES daily time frame is the best, $323,000. Second best is the one we just looked at, which is the ES daily session making $145,000. Then the fourth one is the EMD, even though this one is making $92,000. In fact, we have another one in third place, which is $51,000 on the ES. And now if we scroll down, we can find this one, which is the M60. That's a strategy that's trading one hour time frame on the ES mini futures. It's making $61,000. And it's number 51 in this database of 350 strategies. And this is number 154 in the database. So this is right in the middle. And again, it's an intraday strategy. So even though I'm comparing intraday, different markets, different time frames, I have a metric that can compare all of them together. And this is very beneficial because we don't have infinite capital to deploy. So in this case, out of 350 strategies, if I have enough capital to deploy to the top 10, I know which are the top 10 strategies that deserve my capital to trade. Because now they are all compared equally using a single metric that can easily compare different strategies on different timeframes on different markets. If you like this breakdown, I will dive deeper in the next free issue of the Algo Trader newsletter you can sign up through the link below. Want more videos like this? Watch the next video and I will see you there.